Well, we're now moving into the second game of the semi-finals of Big Bang. This is the match E between Andreas G and Batar. The first game going to Andreas G. Very close fought game. Uh, if Andreas G wins this, he will then proceed through to the finals where he will face off against Matiz, who defeated Mop 9001 in a 2-0 sweep in the F semi-finals. But here we are looking at the Adorn system. Single planet. Pretty open, some nice land bridges there, allowing for some fairly cheeky routes between the bases. Very open system though. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing bots. I'm thinking we're going to see some early bot plays here. It's definitely going to be bots with an air uh, complement to it. Now from what I've seen, at least on this map alone, for the four or five times I did see it, we're going to see most of the confrontation really happening in these kind of choke points and water land spots um, with the air grenadier awkward like how do i kill things kind of going on in in the land bridges as you had mentioned and then if when push comes to shove or player does start to feel like they are just absolutely falling behind they usually like to go for the lot simpler it's a giant open field i guess i'll just run through it on this side of the hemisphere of the planet of the location on of course the bb dorn system well, there is, there's a nice opportunity there, this little land bridge here linking the two bases together, um, but it does make you very vulnerable taking that route. Uh, I'd expect we won't see too much go down that way, but if certainly if you can get something through that, it's the most direct route between the two bases. It would be nice to see if one of the players, um, I know Pata is down one match, go for something crazy like a mass boombot snipe, right? So he just decides, you know, no one's going to take this path, might as well use it and absolutely define the meta of this planet. You know, just <laughs> run like 50 or 60 boombots across this place, get some scouting done, and then, you know, what is Andreas G going to do? Because at least from what I've seen from him, he's going to go for an air complement with it. And yeah, we do see it after this uh, energy factory is done. He's going to start capturing some of this really awkward, like, how do I actually get to some of it metal? And then by the time that that's done, he just doesn't have really anything until he starts going for the mass bots. So Pata could easily get a really quick and cheeky win if he decided to go for the mass boom bots here. But I think we're going to see a little bit more of a reserved game from him as the mass bots do come out. Well, it'd be very difficult, I think, to play a boombot strategy on this because of the fact you know your opponent's going to be playing docks. Docks being the natural counter to boombots. Someone's commander would have to be extremely out of position to not be able to be defended by docks. Uh, right, but, but grenadiers are supposed to counter docks as well, and if you know how to dance them well enough, it just doesn't matter. I wouldn't. I would have thought docks. My experience is that docks will take their grenadiers if both if both sides micro. The docks will win because the docks can dodge the grenadier shots pretty much forever, unless they're being attacked by two different groups from two different directions. Right, right. Do I? Was I being stupid? Did I phrase you said that the wrong? Grenadiers counted docks. I was a... Oh well, yeah, they they sort of do. <laughs> I mean, if the docks are bunched up and you're and the players being really stupid with them, then yes, the the Grenadiers do normally counter the docks. I don't really know what counters Grenadiers besides bombers, really. Well, we we did see in the previous games that actually fact that well, I think the docks would be very effective with Grenadiers. The players haven't really been utilizing them to the best, and we've seen such mass of uh, of Grenadiers. Oh, and unfortunately, these docks here set. To Oh, and actually, they managed to score the win, to my surprise. They were trailing that Faber, and had that uh, that infiltrating docks been used a little smarter, it should have picked up a Faber kill there, because yeah, he had guarding docks were running behind the Faber. Uh, and we 40 see... 40% OP! <laughs> yeah, well, Pitar, though, taking a good eco lead already. Uh, it's spreading out, he's... he's get, even if he hasn't killed the Fabers, he knows where his opponent is spreading out to, but Pitar himself losing a Faber as well to those raiding docks. Uh, both players now just very cautiously spreading out with the docks, finding out where their opponent's getting to, and just making sure to claim as much of this metal as they can. Now, this is one thing that I have seen from Andreas G that I really do like that I don't think many uh, players really do utilize, is the scout plane, the Firefly. I th I think we saw it from the first time when he was playing uh, earlier today. He built like three or, four uh, three or four Fireflies and just sent them out on the map just to figure out where things are. Map awareness and map vision can win you the game. And we I think I've seen this at least, this is the third time now with Andreas G. He loves to have just vision everywhere. And I think that is absolutely fantastic, especially on a map like this where, I mean, you can learn the face of the map, but really every time you see something, you see a new location, it's almost like looking at a brand new planet. I mean, everything is just absolutely everywhere. There's CSGs just running rampant. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be where the scouting is going to be key because the metal is so spread out and there's so many different directions your opponent can be coming uh, from. What, what, Very slow. Um, we need to go through the replay at 435. Some a fabricator just walked up a mountain face, clipped through the land bridge and then got up onto the high ground. <laughs> there you go, you see. You've got no tricks of the <laughs> balance. Map. Got to be knowing the tricks of the map to be playing this. That's what practice is all about. But I think Batar, he had an early eco lead there, but I think he's really going to regret not having gone air sooner 
um, if he's even gone. I think he's finally got his air factory now, but it's very late, and this allowed the Dreadstu to spread out some of this rear metal here quite, uh, quite nicely. Um, I think he's going to look back and he's going to regret the fact that he didn't have air up sooner. Perhaps Andreas G should perhaps have been a little more aggressive with his bombers to get out there and take out some of the expanding fabbers. Uh, but still, it's now meant that he's taken lead. And both players floating again, really struggling to keep up with their produ uh, their production. Agreed. And um, as sort of rumored before, Andreas G with that one air fabricator is just... It's just flying into those really awkward places and just finding exactly where it needs to go. Now, it looks like there is a big... Uh, army here from Patan starting to move out and Andreas G really just doesn't have the answer for it just a lot of the units kind of all over the map and travel time of course is a legitimate thing that does take a while to get to but Andreas it looks G like actually, they're uh, being very careful with his, his mechs we see a lot of single lasers going up at these expansion points he's being very careful about securing a zone before he moves on um, and I don't think his base is at much trouble because there's not a lot of metal in there he's got the commander which can take out a, a docks horde with, with great ease. Really, uh, Patan needs to find this expanding air fabric, which is doing some great work for Andreas G right now. Definitely. Um, I think the reason he's doing this, uh, you know, one or two laser turrets here and there is really just because of the travel time. I mean, try and send a docks out to retaliate against a giant docks army that might be getting ready to raid your four or five metals. It just takes, you know, a good 10, 15 seconds just to get there from the docks alone. Air, you know, the air units do get there slightly faster, but as, well, as Andreas G just found out, docks do shoot up and into the sky, and they can kill air fabricators really quickly. Now, looks like we do have a little bit of a raid party here, moving um, for Pata on the land bridge, starting to pick off some of these units. Now, I don't believe docks have uh, evolved the capabilities to shoot down at things in a crater, but I am kind of curious to see if the Tier 1 turret in the, in the uh, I guess, ravine, or whatever you want to call it, the official map name for it, I'm really curious to see if it will shoot up and try and kill off those docks on the uh, the land bridge. Well, they are trying to, but they're shooting into the base of the land bridge at the moment. They can't. Uh, they can't hang up. They have the docks on the bridge firing down at them. I think they're they're retreating now. So some uh, some nice 3D confrontations going on here, and it's uh, <laughs> they're gonna, trying. It's going to be tricky to keep up with all of this. And we now see the Batar streaming a large docks force in here. Uh, Andres G moving out to, to meet him. Andres G, they're struggling a little, starting to fall behind an eco, but Batar, while having an eco lead, is not spending most of it. Um, both players really struggling to manage their ecos effectively on this map, and these tanks need to retreat now. They, they can't I was going to say, Patan is in a very good spot to do a lot of damage here. He just needs to make sure that he makes the right choices that we can see. He probably doesn't know that there is a Commander Star move. Oh! Oh, that was a shot. beast Uber Cannon. Absolutely beast Uber Cannon. Right in the center. Took them out. Really, uh, really poor moves there by Batar in the land of the stand there. Should have swung around the other side of the factory, but you know, there's turrets everywhere. Really tricky to, to do much damage in that base. I think Batar's going to be better doing a, a containment on Andreas than he's going to be trying to move him for the kill this early on. Oh, you want to know how to win $200? That Uber shot is exactly how you do it. Andreas, gee, that shot was absolutely golden, and oh, we have a fabricator that... Uh, was that full? It looked like it was an empty pelican. Was that it, actually I think it had a combat fabricator in it for a teleporter, because Ouch. from that the looks it. of it, yeah, there is one in Patan's base, so that was absolutely... I mean, that was a massive save there from those docks, and darn it, darn it, Pata, you had such a good spot, but I think, once again, his curse of just not finding ways to kill his opponent, economically, he will win. Army composition-wise, he will win. Killing his opponent, physically destroying the base, he just seems to trip, flounder, and fall every single time. Well, in terms of army, he has a substantial lead over Andres G. It's going to be very hard for Andres G to break back out, but Andres G being very cautious with his defenses, um, making it hard. He's, he's certainly not going to be uh, chasing around having to defend his base. His defense is going up first before he even takes a point. Unfortunately, slowly losing some of these expansions, but... Batar only just beginning to put that economy to use. He's actually behind in terms of factories. I would really like to see another teleporter from um, Patar, though. I think he's at this point in a very commanding position. Um, well, the well, reason there is, there is one. Oh, there is one queued, queued up. queued up, but, but this... I'm not sure if that's Patar or Andreas G who's queued. Oh no, combat fabric, don't do it! No, 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 no! <laughs> the oh, combat oh, fabric goes puppy. down. It's a sad day for that combat fabric. It's uh. Its mother has lost a son, but uh, yeah. uh, combat fiber down. Rest in peace, 2015. A huge push coming in here. These defenses are not going to, to stand for very long. Batar just crushing it with his huge numbers advantage. Um, and Address G falling even further behind Nico now. It really looks like Batar is, is all over him. In terms of army numbers, 
is this, what, 60 units ahead now with a bot that's a fairly accurate uh, comparison? Some more tank, he's switching out to tanks with grenadiers isn't dressed, but I'm not sure that's a good idea on this map. I think the old Dox approach of Patara is going to work out better. That mobility that it gives him um, is really working out well for him right now. I think the uh, decision from Andreas G to add those vehicle factors was actually a really poor choice. The tanks just don't have the mobility. I think he was trying to use them to just try and secure some uh, locations for himself and then use the, the bots as more like the scaffold. The tanks being more or less the brass knuckles that you just kind of gut check uh, Patal with. The problem with that is... Pataz just has a lot of knives right now, and simply put, he's, he can just throw them at Andreas G, not really caring if they hit or not, because he's just got such a greater economy. Right now, Docs, Docs excuse me, just running in, trying to kill off Docs while just uh, gobbling Grenadier shots right now, and he doesn't really care. It's 82 metal versus 155, quite literally double his opponent right now. And Patak and Luzi, so what? He'll just build another army. Well, I have to say that. I thought it was a fairly good confrontation from Red JSG there. Much more sizable um, Dox force coming in against his there. And he used the Dox and the Grenadier as well. And we're now looking around the map. I, I see quite a few forces from Andres G out there now. Raiding, uh, raiding Patar in return. Andres G no longer in the face of... Uh, sorry, Patar no longer in the face of Andres G anymore. It, he's been moving around with big armies. But that was a, that was a bit of a loss for him. It's going to be a bit of a setback. Just because it's going to slow down. But we see the actual fact... <laughs> Uh, Batar already gone tech two. He's got some uh, gillies out on the field now. And he's getting. He's got his one teleport up in his base. Just needs to get a forward teleporter down. And he just needs a combat fiber to survive longer than ten seconds. <laughs> yes, really. they do seem to be. Uh, that Andreas G does seem to have an instinct for finding those poor little things. But with that tech two up, and Andreas G only just putting up his own tech two, that it could turn into a snowball lead really quickly. Now, I like this choice. I mean, it's just kind of something that I've noticed that uh, Patas starting to do here with his fabricators. He's going two slammers, one ghillie for, I think, every every gilly that he has he's got at least one or two slammers kind of in the army composition just to kind of make sure that no docks or tanks can really get near his gillies personally i really like that the gillies i mean since he's not going for the shellers the shellers will outrange the gillies but with those slammers just kind of extra bodyguards to protect this he can now move much larger sizable portions of his army away from kind of more defended spots he's got these three that i did mention earlier he's got them just chilling over the water slammers will easily kill off anything that kind of goes this way so now he can move off the docks that are quite getting absolutely demolished by this one bomber here holy crap the connections are huge this bomber stopping everything that it was gonna do it does die off but its friend decides to join in on the front the fun he wants to try and get a nice little triple kill and then the mass army here kind of kills it off <clears throat> yeah and andreas g is gonna do a lot more trades like that stay in this game with eco's miles behind now and the tier two eco starting to come out for patar um andreas g handling his economy well terribly to be quite honest but his army compositions once again he's coming out the better in these confrontations and again docks moving with something they should not be moving with those docks can be sweeping in there cleaning up the ground there's no problem but they're moving with these tanks, and I don't think that Gilly is really going to be the best unit for taking on uh, mass grenadiers, at least not uh, not on the attack. I was going to say, I really, I mean, just kind of basic micro here, Th that Gilly should not be that close to the front lines. Grenadiers should never have the opportunity to kill Gillies, and they, he is backing it off now because he realizes those those Gillies are kind of expensive. But it looks like Patan with a large air army, I don't think we've kind of gone over this, but he really does have a, have a much larger air army over in G. I would really like to see him maybe get one or two air fabricators out just because he does have this air security. He really should just be kind of, extra, you know, flexing his, mus his air muscles right now. No, he's got absolute air dominance at this point, and... Really, Andreas G giving up the air far too easily to Batar there. But I uh, probably got help because of the uh, the eco difference. Surprised to see this switch up into tanks. I'm not really sure I, li I like this uh, tank switch up on this map. I, d I don't think it's giving them the mobility needs to stay out there. Better to go with the hummingbirds in the air to counter any bumblebees and then just use your docks to be charging around everywhere. And Batar <laughs> used his early docks advantage really well, which is what's allowed him to tech up, I think. Now, the tier 2 has just finished for Andreas G. He is down effectively double uh, 103 metal versus 220 for in uh, Patas favor and I think the no the I was gonna say the teleporter there were units staring at it but I guess they just decided to get moved off I really I agree I really don't like the decision to go for this mass tank grenadier here from Andreas G because that's really gonna start kind of tunnel visioning him into okay I gotta make a play happen I gotta make something work here and really I he needs to kind of fall back to what he was doing so well before he's got an air fabricator going through the kind of the uh, the Grand Canyon of this this map here and he is starting to regain some of that metal that he did lose and simply put Andreas G or uh, Patan excuse me really hasn't 
you know, expanded as much as he should be, especially in such a commanding position. Well, with his access to tier 2 at this point, he uh, can almost rebuild over the eco he's already in control of, uh, and just still um, be dominating over NGSG, because NGSG isn't moving into the contested zones, just because that massive air force means that he really has no means by which to expand, and I think at this point NGSG is potentially seeing I th that, Yeah, I think yeah. someone just felt the touch of death. That was his attempt to push into the base, and now he's seeing this, uh, this small army with tier 2 backup push out and just crush his, his little force. And there's not really else going on for him. He's only got one other small Grenadier force out on the field now. His efficiency is still tanking hard. And he's got half the army that Batar has. And Batar, less factories, but he's just, he's, he's gone tier 2. He's gone tier 2 really, uh, really quite early in this map. And I think he's just a teleporter away from claiming victory here. Well, he did start it a lot earlier. I think he started in the optimal position. He was quite ahead in uh, terms of map control, economy, efficiency, units spread. He was, I would say, in a much more commanding position against Andreas G. And, I mean, I think he made it at the right time. He knew that he was probably going to be on the, on the downslope just because of the efficiency-wise. And we did see, with that uh, earlier Grenadier trade versus docks, he did lose quite a lot of army and map control. And those units did start to kind of move in against him. The thing was, though, by the time that Andreas G's tanks did actually get to Patan's base, the tier 2 was done. So, he did maybe lose two or three metal extractors, but it really wasn't as much as um, he could have lost. Yeah, and I, at this point, I'm trying to see what Andreas G can do to get back into this. Um, really, it's just going to be... It's, it's going to be very, very hard. He's well, this is a good start here, DDoSing Patan's units. <laughs> He's going to have to execute some some really nice raids, and there's a great opportunity... No, there's an unfortunately, uh, yeah, unfortunately an, uh, turret there to defend against those air, otherwise that would have been a nice pickup for him. It's really going to struggle. There's, there's so much tier 2 out there. The economy of Patar is booming. Uh, Address G is only just starting to get his economy back under control. At massive air control in place from Patar, which is really going to crush any attempt at expansion that Address G really needs to make. And I just don't see how he's going to break out of his base. He's going with his mass grenadiers, which is a smart play, I think, because it's really all he can do. But I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that tier 2 speed. Holy cow, Batman. You want to talk about a bunch of tier 2 fabricators building a tier 2 air factory like in the uh, face of your opponent, the that's GG. how you do it. There's the GG, Andreas G, go in the GG. Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was perfectly sensible of him. I, he scouted out that tier 2 factory as well, I think he knows there was no way he's coming back from that. That was, um, yeah, a really, really good play there by Patar. He, he controlled the map nicely with the docks, then tech smartly. Didn't just just go. Didn't just continue to spam out more and more docks, and then allowed Andres to get back in a bit like a uh, bit like last time. But he smartly teched up, and then Andres G just never really got back in the game after that. <laughs> well played by uh, Patar. Honestly, his just. Overall, I mean, this he was basically Andreas G in these earlier matches. Everything just kind of seemed to go in his favor. He was aggressive at the right time. He was expanding at the right time. I think he could have definitely uh, worked a little bit better in kind of securing that Grand Canyon of land bridges and everything. Oh, 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 before I forget, um, can we just jump back real quick to 430-something that I had mentioned when the units started glitching through everything? Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's, let's, Sweet. Uh, let's zoom this back a little there. Let's see this. So there... Heading under the bridge. Under the bridge, and I think then there's some interesting path. And then poof! Through the bridge! There's a little interesting bit where they come up the mountain ramp yeah, and yeah, yeah, hop yeah. through the bridge. Well, let's see, a fascinating. I, I don't think that's where they wanted to go though, but uh, that is where the pathing took them. <laughs> so, it's the road less traveled. Le learning the secret routes. Unfortunately, knowing the secret routes did not help Andreas G in this game. But which, is, which is a big upset, though, because, I mean, he did eventually grab those two. I would have really liked to see maybe a Pelter or something just to really lock down this entire area. Having, you know, a few turrets or something, maybe even a Grenadier or two on the uh, the land bridges would have been absolutely fantastic for control. Yeah, I think, well, Andreas G reacted smartly, I think, when he moved to Grenadiers, because he didn't have a lot of choice, and that Grenadiers were really the only option he had to try and get good wins, and in the confrontations he fought, he did get the good wins, but because that left him unable to exert any pressure, he lost the he lost air, and once he lost air, he really had no means to uh, force Patar to do anything, which was what allowed Patar to then go to Tech 2, and as soon as that was up, 
um, and JST was in real trouble. Y yeah, and it, once your opponent's gone tech two, and if you don't have tech two, you need to be winning on the ground. Um, otherwise, at that point, you are pretty doomed because the T2 ego starts to go up, and then the snowball effect happens. Well, looking, I just I was really curious because I know I, I this is the one thing that I always harass in JSG about the metal wasted. Looking at the game summary though, for probably about the first half of the game, it, we do see that Andreas G was floating quite a bit of metal here against his opponent, but in the end, just I think because Patad kind of fell lazier, maybe I mean his 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 uh, surplusing just got really out of hand. 